It's a little shorter than usual, I know, but only got two fifths of the band here, and um, quite frankly, didn't want to uh, turn this into a big long interview when the whole band's not here to represent. So yeah, there. I, that, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Daddy's tired. Okay. We're so, getting old, man. <laughs> you guys. I will say something that someone always said to me at, at, at my last job. You've never been my age. Oh. I've been your age. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Tile. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a local metal band that is heavily influenced by Mesoamerican and Latin cultures. Um, I saw them at Triple B, or Backstage Bar and Billiards, for the Apocalypse in the Desert Metal Fest, day number two. And that was an amazing day, which I did a separate review of, uh, which you can check out. I think I'll throw the thumbnail on the screen. Um, we, this is actually the second time I've interviewed them because uh, of technical glitches on the virtual version. So I'm really happy I can get them in the, the, the kitchen today. Please welcome to the channel, Eloteros. Say hi, guys. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? <laughs> it's actually two-fifths of Eloteros. Yeah. So if you don't know who they are, thank you for watching. But also, go ahead and tell them who you are and what you do in the band and who we're missing. I'm Diego. I play drums for Eloteros. And... Well, obviously. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So guys, I'm Ivan. I play bass for Loteros, and yeah, we like to play metal. <laughs> um, who are we missing? We're missing your brother Saul. We're missing Saul, our brother, uh, Brian, our other guitarist, and Bob, the vocalist. Right. Yeah. Uh, Saul plays guitar. Lead also. Guitar, yeah, as well. And Brian plays lead guitar as well. So. Okay, so basically, we have I have the rhythm section here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. right off the bat, <clears throat> I want to ask, who named the band, and why did you name yourselves the Corn People? Uh, it was a decision in between us three. Um, you, you two, us three brothers. Yeah, oh. us three, yeah. And, uh, but you're, you're, you're his brother? Yeah, we're all brothers. Oh, I, I thought it was just you and Saul. Oh, no. so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. it's one of those shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was one of those decisions, you know, we've been playing out through the years you know locally and when it came to a point where we're just like you know what we got to make a band right you know this guy got old enough you you know being amazing on drums and we just decided to be like eloteros and eloteros comes because of our culture we're you know we're mexicas we're mexicans and it's a culture that we grew up with and we want that culture to be out there again right and we want to bring awareness our, of our culture out there. But, but Eloteros, are they, correct me if I'm wrong, that's basically the vendors who sell you the street corn, right? Yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. Right on. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to like just say, what? That's really why I was like, why did you name yourself after street vendors? But Yeah, cornmen, yeah. yeah. No, but it all goes back to the corn itself, how our ancestors, they would use corn in many ways, and they showed how mutating, mutating it in many ways as well. And planning it could give life and give many more mm -hmm. to what they survived on back in the, back in their in their days. I guess we could say. Yep, a lot of American. Um, when I say American, I mean invaders. A lot of the American, um, the growth of American civilization of what we what came to be American civilization was because of the, the maize. You know, all the 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 training or what they got and how to grow maize and, and potatoes and other things. Yeah, a, a lot of our society, you know, revolves about around influences from that. Yeah. You know, which is pretty cool. And and I think it's something we can use at a you know daily lifestyle. Right. On. For example. But yeah. But we're here to talk about music. Yeah. So yeah. exactly. <laughs> music guy. So um, speaking of which, if you want to be on the channel and talk about things that are not music, <laughs> hit, hit me up using the email address down in the description or click on the Room 6 social media link. That's also where you can find ways to support the channel, such as room6.shop, where you know I have my online merch, um, the Patreon page with patron-only content, and um, you know maybe you buy one of my CDs. What the hell? Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> if you want to uh, be on the channel, hit me up using the email address, uh, and um, we'll have a good time. 
Now then, before I get into some of my more usual interview questions, I have to ask, brothers in a, in a band, a lot of fights? Or w was there in the past? Uh, no, because Saul and I, we used to play together before he, you know, was around. So we've always had, you know, we always learned how to separate our brother relationships, <laughs> our relationship as a sibling, opposed to music or stuff like that. We just grew up in that way to separate things. But yeah, we have our disagreements and everything, but it's all kind of chill about it. Right on. Because, um, you know... You could get like bands like Oasis, you know Liam and Noel constantly fighting. And I was just wondering if if that kind of was was that was that anima was there an animosity like fueling the death metal? You know, <laughs> no. The cool thing is that we learned to put our egos aside. You know, that's yeah. that's a big thing with bands that you new musicians especially, but <laughs> the ones who've been around for a long time they should know better. Yeah, it's the hardest thing to do is put because everybody right wants to be the star. Yeah, you know, and and especially when you have more than one front person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, throughout the years, you know, it's changed. We're like, it's not just about the lead singer or the mm -hmm. guitarist or the solos you know, or yeah, whatever. It's, you know, about the whole band and everybody likes to be up front and everything. But there we go. Ego, <laughs> yeah, ego just put that away for a while. Unless you're a YouTuber. <laughs> Ching! Anyway, <laughs> so. Um, let's talk earliest musical influences, and what I mean by that, I don't mean what did you grow up listening to, or you know what. I, what I mean is, this is a question I ask all my guests. What was that first moment you remember being like, I want to do that? <laughs> oh man, I have a very <clears throat> clear moment of that. I was maybe around nine or ten years old, and my dad he would always bring concerts to the house and stuff like that. You know, DVDs, you know, VHS, right? You know. And he brought Black Sabbath one day, and I saw Geezer Butler just fucking, Geezer Butler. you know, slapping the shit out of that bass, and just, it, it was really awesome, you know. And from there, I was just like, I want to be like that guy. Like, that guy just fucking, just wanted to be like that dude. It, right? He was my guy. Why not? And yeah, that's that was my first moment for sure. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry to step away there. I just had this fear of, did I hit record? <laughs> don't don't need any more technical glitches, please. Um, how about you? Well, for me, it was uh, when I was uh, roughly eight, nine years old. Um, my older, our older brother, Saul, he showed me either Saul or him. I can't remember exactly, but <laughs> it was Someone. this song. I, I, I might be butchering the name Omni Persistence by uh, Beyond Creation. And there is a breakdown that in the drums where it, it just started doing a gravity blast. And it showed the camera of how he was doing the gravity blast that in the snare, the fact that how everything in the <laughs> snare sounded like a machine gun mm -hmm. was what caught my attention and be like, I need to play drums like that. At a very young age, I, I was very, I was introduced to the metal, metal world and it really caught my attention for a very, very, very long time. And that's honestly one of why I play drums as well as my biggest influence is play metal. Right. So you're both rooted in old school metal. Because you're yeah, saying Black Sabbath, yeah. basically. Yeah, like, oh, you know, metal. Uh, we definitely like Cattle Corpse kind of style. Corpse, Corpse Dying Fetus. Yep. Um, DSI, the Final Remains. Yeah, definitely old school metal. Mm -hmm. Is and I I felt like well we felt that's why we made it with those because we felt like our scene in Las Vegas was just metal was just kind of like dying, dying out. out and then kind of cool here and then because cool. you've been a, you've been Oloteros for a while right? Uh, well, yeah, when we started, it was maybe was it five years ago, six years I was going to say it was like 2017 or something like that. Yeah, five, five yeah. six years ago. And I remember I it was right before quarantine, basically, and things were kind of... No, yeah, way they, before quarantine. Yeah, it was way before quarantine, but around, you know, around quarantine, it, it was... It was it was fun. It was I, fun. I, I, remember, <laughs> road. I remember once quarantine ended, it, it didn't matter what you played, if it was live music, it was packed. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think we use that at a, at our advantage. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of bands did, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and it worked out, man. You know, you just kind of have to keep the ball rolling. Yep. 
So, moving on. Um, does Zenoteros have a mascot? You know how some bands, like like uh, Iron Maiden's got Eddie and, you know... Megadeth. And... Yeah. Uh, that's actually like, is there like a good giant corn on the cob with a, you know, with, with, a, with this like corn silk long hair? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty cool idea. But yeah, we've actually had that in the air. It's something that we kind right. of discussed and it's, or just have like, like two corn stalks, maybe the heirloom ones with all the different colors, you know, the, and two corn stalks like this and then your name across. The... Yeah. You can use that. That's free. <laughs> Garden design by room six. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just I was sitting there when I was writing the notes. I was like, for some reason, Eddie popped in my head from, from <laughs> Iron Maiden. Skull. I guess I don't know why, but but I was just like, do they? What would there? What would a mascot be? So, all right, just an idea. Yeah. Um, do you have a nickname for your your fans? Nickname for our fans, like cornheads, or or you know, I, I, I thought I saw something in in like some posts. Or maybe just maybe it was just you insulting them. I don't know. Uh, we, not that we, no, we, we, not that we. <laughs> ever not that we. Oh, all right. Now that you mentioned it, <laughs> these are all gems, yeah, guys. Man, you're giving a whole bunch right? of gems. Right? Okay. <laughs> now that you mentioned in, it, in that case, sticking with that whole thing, let's, let's just build the EPK right here. Let's just build the press kit. Um, I'm gonna ask a question that we that musicians hate. We all hate it. Oh, okay. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> So look at the camera. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. Oof. Real metal. Whoa. That's it. Metal, <laughs> just metal, pure metal. We will, we'll always describe our band as that, and our music is just metal. And not even like Mesoamerican or Latin culture. No, just leave it metal. Alone. I, okay. that, we have I we have, we've stuck to that for a while. We're just like well, the reason I keep going back to that is because every song is named after like a freaking yeah god, you know yeah <laughs> that too. And, you know. It's, it's a story that we also are making as well with our album that we're making mm -hmm. in the moment. But yes, we our ideas and everything. Are still completely different. It's it's it's, it's kind of like a story based telling wise with our music, with the titles of our songs and everything. But even at the, at the end of the day, our music wise and the influence is just pure fucking metal. The ideas and what influence we all bring to the table is just pure fucking punching your face. <laughs> we're here. Yeah. We're here to have make noise, <laughs> and we're here to have fucking fun. Right yeah. on. Sorry, audio person. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can see the audio person off screen, off camera. It's cringing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right. Apologies. Yeah. Right. So, with that, I don't know about you. I think your some cups are getting a little low here. Well, so we're gonna take a quick boost break and hear a quick message from Future Josh. So, boost break. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. It's a sad fact for musicians on the road or just playing at their local bar that gear gets stolen sometimes because people. Fortunately, there's a way to help get it back. With Tile, you have a backup plan when something needs to be found. Just tap Find in the Tile app. Watch the Tile detector's green rings fill in as you get closer to them. Tile also has lost and found stickers with a QR code full of your contact info. That can be scanned by whoever finds it. If you lose something when you're out and about, Tile can help you locate it. View its most recent location on a map, and it'll show you the last time it was with you or the last time your Tile app was able to locate it. You can also tap Notify when found, so the Tile Network, which is every phone running the Tile app and their network extenders, can help locate the lost item. Each device on the network is able to help locate Tile trackers and send location updates to your Tile app. Anonymously, of course. And with the Premium Protect Plan, Tile will even reimburse you if something can't be found. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get peace of mind and save some cash. Plus. You'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Tile for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! Clink! Clink, clink, clink. clink. And if you have a drink, toast to you too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and a toast. Here's to you, and here's to me, and if ever we should disagree, then the hell with you, and here's to me. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, 
If that sponsor spot interested you all, you at all, it would really help out the channel if you use the link down there. You'll save some money, and also you'll help me out. So, win, win, win. <laughs> now then, a couple more questions, and then I'll send you on your way. Number one, uh, you have a new song coming out. We don't have a name for it yet, right? Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it right now? Uh, uh yeah, sure. You know, like it's, just, it's, this it's... isn't going to post for like a couple months, probably. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So. We have a single that we we're about re about to record. We're actually starting with the drums, and you know that fun process, mm -hmm. that good old time. Uh, yeah, we have a song coming out. It's called "Rising Mashika." That's right. That's right. I and that's did the name, tell me that off that's camera. That's what's the name of our album going to be as well. Yeah, so it's going to be a self-titled uh, song or single. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Some stuff like that, but <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, feel free to send me a copy and any lyrics and artwork, and I'll be oh, happy to do a review video. Of definitely, course, man, definitely. I love doing reviews, especially of, 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 of like single songs, because you don't get too many of those. People generally are recording, are reviewing like a whole album, but nowadays, a lot of acts are just releasing a song at a time. Yeah, yeah. There, it, there's definitely been a, an evolution of how to you know bring music out. Mm -hmm. right? I mean. I like, I've been into music history, so I've seen all these, you know, fun eras of how music is getting released. Yeah. It, it, it keeps repeating itself. It's all thievery, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um, <coughs> hold on. Yes, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. So, <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, what is your favorite show memory of performing as Eloteros? And it oh. could be it could be one where things went way off the rails, or you checked off a bunch of rock star wish list things, or just that was crazy. You know, somebody went to jail or whatever. <laughs> you know, actually, we've had our little highlights or milestones, you, know, you can put it. But recently, we just opened up for Allegiant and right. Zenith yep. Passage and, as well, and Passage of Zenith, and you know, great bands <laughs> fucking blew our minds out, and it was an honor for that. Um, another one that I could really be proud of is Brujeria. Yes, they're we, big name. We opened up for them, and it, it was just, oh, dude, it was, it was a great night for sure. Well, you know, we got a lot of good crowd. You know, we just fans and everything. You know, it's awesome. But yeah, Brujeria and Legion has been one of the Thanks. highlights for us. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I could, that's for me. <laughs> that as well, and then our, I guess our. Very, very first show, which was a uh, backyard show, which are <laughs> on backyard uh, show. I don't, know, I don't know which, <laughs> I don't know if our El Otero page, the one that we have right now, has it or a different one, but it was him and everybody, our brother. Uh, it was just a trio at that point. We all had short hair. He was wearing his, it was like a Halloween time. So <laughs> he was wearing his Spider-Man onesie. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, one of the most hilarious. hilarious. I would have found it if it was, if it was on your page. I would have found it, it. It was one of the most hilarious things ever. Cause... I would have pulled that crap out. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, awesome. if we do find it, we'll send it to you. But, right on, please. Um, <laughs> but it, that was one of our, one of, one of my first show, one of our first shows that it made me realize like, damn, like, I, I, it was my summer of becoming a freshman and everything. It made me realize, like, damn, I'm starting a band with my brothers, and this is a whole different chapter that it could go into a whole different direction. And right. so far, everything that we've done for the past <coughs> five, six, five, four, five, six years that we've been together with, of course, new members and different members in, in our in in our journey, but. It's really something that made me realize, like, damn, this is something that I for sure want to continue and want to do as brothers to the end and everything. Right. Regardless of what happens and everything, but th that first show is what, like, all right, I'm in this for sure <laughs> and forever. Nice. Um, I wanted to ask a question I've never asked before on one of these interviews. Okay. okay. I've done over 130 of these over the course of four year, over four years. And I, I decided to spring it on you two guys. So oh. you're my guinea pigs. Ooh. Yeah, we're popping All right. cherries. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. Let's test them. And uh, if you have an answer to this question, go ahead and put it down in the comments, please. Yeah. Um, let's get that you know, <laughs> algorithm engagement going. So. What is your biggest regret? 
musically. Hmm. Whether it was a missed opportunity or uh, a, sh- a show just was abysmal or, or you, you know, I, oh, I should have bought that guitar or whatever. I feel like for me, my, I guess, biggest opportunity. We can, we can also, you can, if you, if you just want to talk about general life, biggest regret, we can do that too. No, yeah, but like <laughs> musically and musically wise was, I believe my middle school year, my last year, I believe mm-hmm. my band teacher slash jazz teacher as well, Darren Motamity, if he's still around, props to him. Thank you for everything. <laughs> if he ever does watch, but. Uh, he offered me an opportunity to go to LBCA and I've had many other uh, alumni in this kitchen. Yep. <laughs> and he offered me very much. And he told me too, he was like, Hey man, I see the very, opp- I see the potential and opportunity you have. Let me write you. You uh, said no. Basically, <laughs> I, basically, <laughs> I know I, I, I basically rejected him, but. He's he, I after middle school and everything I would go back to him my freshman and sophomore years to say what's up and and see what's up with his band and everything and we would talk jam a little bit jam our old songs and everything and he saw how much I've grown musically and everything he was like even though I didn't put you in LBCA and you didn't take the opportunity he was mm-hmm. like I see you're still going with good. But he still had Good to say, it. And everything. he still had to say, you, you blew it. Yep, <laughs> you, you still got, you still had to give me shit. Don't worry, don't get me wrong. You still had to give me shit. Yeah. Right. 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 Me shit. I, 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 I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it that that was one of the most I like fuck. Yeah, I taking it when I was young and then still could have done it. Young you is always an idiot. A little bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> we still grow. I'm, we still... I'm 50 and I could write a book. And he's 75 off camera. And he could definitely, he's written books about <laughs> the idiot things we do when we're younger. Right? Right there, father-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> young, young, young you is an idiot, right? Ooh. Young you is an idiot. Me? Yeah, oh, everybody. Okay, I'll say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, don't, 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 yeah. Uh, how about you? Oh, man. My biggest regret. I'm going, I'm, I'm bringing the channel deep. We're going deep. <laughs> That's what she said. Wow. Damn. Low hanging fruit. <laughs> That's a tough the youngest question. brother right here. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question, man. Uh, that's why I asked it. I was like, let's, let's, let's get a little substance going on. I can tell you what mine is. Yeah, that'll help me out. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a, I, I, so I had an indie rock band called The Suspense. Okay, and it, it was named that because um, that pregnant pause right before the, everything drops, you know, uh, you know, right before you step on the distortion pedal, or right, before, you know, that that break, and then, <clears throat> I love that moment. I live for that moment, and that's the suspense of that moment. So I don't know why I had to explain that. Nobody cares. Um, <laughs> but we we played. Uh, <laughs> we got paid. To play my holo- my work's holiday party at Blue Martini. <laughs> nice. Don't know how managed to work it out, but basically we played before uh, a local cover band played. And um, they we were like winding up the cables and everything. And one of the contact people that we talked to came up and was like, uh, the owners really loved you. They want to talk, you know, have you guys back, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm like, cool. And, they, and we played originals mostly. So you want us to, okay, mm-hmm. cool. And those people, suddenly that person and the other contact person no longer worked for them. I mm-hmm. kept calling back, kept calling back. And I regret that I didn't immediately be like, hey, where are they? Let's go talk. Let me, t- let me introduce us. But, uh, yeah, I regret moments like that where what would have happened? I probably would be a dead-eyed casino player, quite frankly. You know, you actually bring me back to some... I've, I did have some kind of opportunity like that. It was... A pretty good paid opportunity, and I'm a big guy who doesn't like to get you know. How do I say it? Like sold. You're right. You don't want to be a product. You yeah, want to be an exa- artist. exactly. So I, I didn't want, I didn't want to fall into that category. Or it's just it's a conscious fucking thing. We're just like you know what, like fuck that. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to make my own music and you know, fucking bust ass and whatever, all that fun stuff. But I did have an opportunity where I, I was going to get paid good money and fucking 
you know, tour around the world and do what I love, playing bass and stuff like that. But you felt like it was a sellout? But, I, yeah, I felt like... Crossroads. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it was a lot. And I was a young kid, so... That's when you're supposed to do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid, yeah. It was one of those moments where you're like, fuck! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but... I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this. Like, I'm happy where I'm at with music right now. Yeah. So. I mean, you, you wouldn't be here. You, exactly. In my kitchen. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Have some good beers. <laughs> right. Right. So. Cheers. Last question. You made it. Yay. Hell yeah. Okay. It was a little shorter than usual, I know, but only got two fifths of the band here, and um, quite frankly, didn't want to uh, turn this into a big long interview when the whole band's not here to represent. So. Yeah. There. I, that, that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Daddy's tired, okay? We're so, getting old, man. <laughs> you guys. I will say something that someone always said to me at, at, at my last job. You've never been my age. Oh. I've been your age. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you never will be my age. You, you know, that's kind of happening over here with a little one. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> so... Oh, we're going to circle back, and for you, Room 6 uh, OGs, you know this is a question I ask of all my prey. Um, we're going to circle back to that first question about earliest musical influence. Okay. And let's pretend we're talking a little you, or we're talking the new musicians, okay? Okay. So it's time to teach the children. <laughs> what is one thing that you wish someone had told you you're going to need to know about going down this twisted road that is being a musician? Oh, Wow. There you go. Yeah. And if there was a guitarist here, I would say, don't say change your strings. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, what, what the equivalent is for drums or uh, bass. Uh. So what I, what would I tell my young self or yep. get some... Well, actually, real quick. How old are you? 19. I'm barely about to be 19 Yeah, in see? A month. <laughs> and, when, and how long have you been... How long, when did you start, like, I want to do that? Uh, how old? When I was roughly... You're about seven. Yeah. Okay, I thought he was going to say like 15. Well, like, no, ah. well, I mean, <laughs> when, I started, when I started playing drums, I was like 7 or 8 years old. But then when I for sure started taking it seriously when I was... You're about 10 or 11. 10, okay. 10 or 13. So there's... there, there I, I know. Start, 10 I know. or 13. <laughs> there's a young... You, there, we, can, we can say it. Okay, so how, your peers. Go ahead. <laughs> no, so yeah, what, what do you got for the, the youngins that... You know, anybody that's thinking of, I want to do that, I want to be a musician, I want to go down that road. Uh, I got it. That you uh, wish like, you, someone had told you. You gotta be fucking mentally prepared to get your ass kicked. That that that's a. It doesn't mean like you're gonna get in fights all the time. No, I mean <laughs> mentally, like you know, yeah. there's pressure, there's you rejection, know, all, rejection. You know, you probably. Been, in my experience, I played literally for no one before. Two drunks and a bartender. You know, I, yep. I, we traveled to California and we played in front of nobody. Like mm-hmm. whatever, it happens. You learn yeah. from those experiences. Yep. It's kind of shitty, but you're like, all right. It's a paid rehearsal. Exactly. Exactly. So we're done that. Yep. So <clears throat> my advice, or an advice I would have gone as a kid, is like you better be ready to get your ass kicked mentally, and you know it's it's a lifestyle. It's something you really either you learn how to eat shit sometimes, and <laughs> it sounds vulgar as fuck, but you know it's, you either learn how to t- take shit or. You know, be a bitch and just don't do it. Straight up, if you're gonna be comf- if you're gonna be comfortable, then just yeah, don't a do prison it. Prison movie. <laughs> In a way, yeah. That's what I would tell us. Don't right. be a bitch. You know, right. straight up as a kid, don't be a bitch if you're gonna come into this world of music. How about you, Nino? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, not for my younger self because I'm already young, but for the younger children that want to learn and want to be in the mu- music world is. Dedicate the time and practice to get your skills better and better and better. Yeah, that too. No matter <laughs> yeah. what, even if people or your significant other or your families oh. are telling you, hey, don't do this, I don't like it, whatever. <laughs> Forget all of that. If you love what you do, playing music, standing in front of a stage, making... Oh, Standing in front of a stage making... What did they ever do to you, man? <laughs> just knocking a sunglasses They, just, they were just, just looking at you in the <laughs> 
All right. If you okay. enjoy standing in in front of a stage with either two people, three people, drunk or not, <laughs> or they enjoy your music and they enjoy what you like. We want to thank Billy for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if it's like that or a full full show, sold out show and everything, you enjoy making those people dance, laugh, enjoy their time, whatever they're going through, whatever you erase that memory, you forget the problems that they're going through and you just make them have a good time and you as well if you enjoy making music and playing music in front of people and you want to continue that as your journey as your life continue yes there are going to be speed bumps and uphills and downhills and everything but that's the process of it yeah. well said <laughs> it's not it's not beautiful yeah, it's not yeah. pretty but there's some pretty times and there's some hell times yeah. but if you want to continue and be like the greatest gods are like Black Sabbath, Black Dolly and Murder, fucking, uh, I don't know. Iron Maiden. Bull- <laughs> Iron Maiden, Bullet for Valentine, all of that. All of those bands you like and everything, whatever genre it is, you want to be like them, you got to take what it is to in dedication to be like them. Yep. Hey, cheers to that. Well man. spoken, man. Right, room six. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. And honestly... I can't add much more to that, except if I was going to say anything to young me, it would be, look up what imposter syndrome is. It's <laughs> going to be a thing for every musician. Now you made me want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what imposter syndrome is, right? I, I'm being honest. No. Do you ever get those intrusive thoughts that just be like, oh, no, I don't, I don't deserve this good thing, or I'm not good enough, or why... why uh, Yes. Uh, yes. Those, <laughs> yes. Those yes. Every, every singer songwriter knows that feeling. <laughs> Excuse me. You know everyone what? and and yeah. young 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 youngins no, look it up and and it's a thing. Well, now honestly, the, the kids nowadays they they know what imposter syndrome is and, and, and you know anxiety and ADHD and all that. But yeah. don't be afraid to take an honest look at yourself and say, "Why am I feeling this way?" And then. Get over it. Shut up about it because you, I'm telling you, shut, tell yourself to shut up about it. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm saying hey, you, <laughs> if you have a, you have something to tell to, to, you have a sound to put out there. You have words to put out there. Do it because yeah. at the end of the day, we're all going to die anyway. But at the end of the day, it really is worth it. And, um, it's, and the same goes with practice yeah. because purposeful practice, yep. you'll never regret doing it. Exactly. Nobody wants to do it. You never want to. It's like working out. You never want to get off the couch. You never want to go do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 50. Um, you never want to do it. Yeah. But you're always glad you did when it comes time to solo or to, you know, when you get that look from, mm, yeah. Every musician likes that look. Just like, or yeah. in mm. another way. People don't like wiping their ass, but when they see the when they wipe their ass <laughs> and they that first swipe is clean and they have to wipe nothing. Exactly. Nineteen years old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe younger, but hey. No, some no. Some people hey, I know every day people don't like wiping their own ass, but hey, if you get that <laughs> one clean wipe where you get nothing, I can go out the day. Interview's going great. <laughs> and with that... We're learning about ass wiping. With that, we're going to temporarily say goodbye. I think we, uh, we have a music video. You guys have music videos, right? Yeah, we Floods have... Floods of Klalok. Floods of Klalok. Check it out. Right. You know, yeah. We just recently hit 1,000 views. If you want to continue to hit more than that, please and subscribe. Thank you. And share it to all your friends and family. <laughs> Very much. We appreciate it. And if you feel like subscribing to the channel, you know, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> stick around. We're going to see that video. And then I will catch you yeah. in the outro. In the meantime, temporarily say goodbye. Say goodbye, guys. Later. Have a good night. <laughs> and cheers <laughs> to all you motherfuckers. Boom. <laughs> see you.
two-fifths of them for coming by the channel. It was a great interview, an awesome music video. If you want to know more about the band, definitely check out the social media links down in the description. And if you want to be on the channel, hit me up. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to subscribe to the channel, it really does make a difference. Please click up there and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not at all like theirs, click over there. Uh, yeah, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Later, motherfuckers. Later, motherfuckers. <laughs> Good night, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>